This will be the last election that will be rigged in the history and annals of this country. We say no to electoral robbery. We say no to travesty of justice. And we say no to coup against our constitution. The battle to salvage Nigeria is a battle of no retreat, no surrender. Hello, welcome to Politics on the Wheel with Jay. And in reaction to they, we looked at the events that unfold in India. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as most Nigeria believe, that is President select by the Independent National Electoral Commission and upheld by the Tribunal a week ago. I mean, yeah, it's almost a week, a week now, was in India for the G20. And uh, we learned also that at the G20, Africa now is like a permanent member where they invited the, the AU president to join other world leaders. We saw that the president of Nigeria, Bola Metinibu, was congratulated or, like I said, was, you know, uh, by showered praise upon on how he was able to handle the democratic processes in West Africa as the chairman of ECOWAS by the president of the United States, Joe Biden. Now, before I speak much about that and uh, other related issues, like a lady who was bothered from Nigeria to somewhere in London, and there was an allegation that uh, she died on board, and uh, her cup was dumped somewhere in Egypt, and the flight move on. That has been spec uh, circulating social media for the past 48 hours. And uh, it is before I speak about that, here is a video of a group in Abuja where they are talking about the judgment that was passed by the tribunal saying. It is a coup against the people, and this will be the last time it ever happened in Nigeria. This will be the last election that will be rigged in the history and annals of this country. We say no to electoral robbery. We say no to travesty of justice. And we say no to coup against our constitution. The battle to salvage Nigeria is a battle of no retreat, no surrender. And that is why we are here. Never. If you know that Peter Obi is president of Nigeria, say aye. And if you know that Ahmed Bolatinibu of the APC did not make 25% in the FCT say I. Therefore, on behalf of the Nigerian people and on behalf of our democracy, on behalf of the constitution of Nigeria, on behalf of everyone who voted for Peter Obi as their president, and on behalf of the powers of the Electoral Act, and on behalf of the authority of citizenship. We You've seen that this was this actually a cool on Nigeria? Was it actually um, a democratic, real democratic processes that happened after losing 70 people during the election and some people lost their eyes, some were beaten and all manner. I've been flogged out of my unit, yeah, flogged out know. of my on Owale Street, solo, solo, what seven, flogged out like a common criminal. Look at my neck. Flogged out, and I was just standing. I didn't cause any trouble. I was just standing. I can be almost voting, and they came out with canes and flogged me out like I was a criminal. Out of my unit, I, I cannot vote. Meanwhile, somewhere in West Africa, we had a successful coup without a bloodshed. So now let's go back to what happened in uh, India at the G20. Well, the president of Nigeria and the chairman of ECOWAS met with other world leaders, including the president of the United States of America. And Joe Biden said that he is pleased with the way that uh, Bola Tinibu is handling the democratic processes in West Africa. Excuse me. We also learned that uh, there is, you know, as a, when I call it, there was a security intelligence from the Russia counterpart saying that the United States are planning to execute the military junta in Niger because they have over a hundred million dollar investment in drone that is situated in Niger. And as a result of that, they have so much interest in that region. As the ECOWAS are no longer moving fast, you know, to invade Niger to restore a democratic elected president. You can remember that the ECOWAS chairman, 
His Excellency, Mr. Uh, President Bola Tedebo, has over that there will be a restoration of the presidential, I mean, the elect president. The democratic elected president of Nigeria to power, but unfortunately, they decided to go to uh, diplomatic means as most Africans and West African leaders keep pressurizing the ECOWAS leaders, you know, to step down any form of military action on Niger as that will escalate into destroying the whole region. And the president of the United States, you know, thanking or appreciating Bola Metinebo as to how he handle or is handling the the issues of ECOWAS, you know, can be seen from two different well. From one hand, it talks about the military intervention plan by the ECOWAS leaders. From the other hand, it can be seen that his withdrawal from the military intervention on Niger. From the angle of the military intervention to Niger that was withdrawn, you know, um, if you ask most Nigerians and Nigerians, they will tell you that uh, they don't believe that is what uh, Mr. President uh, Joe Biden is talking about because he would have been so happy if there was a military intervention in Niger to restore the democratic elected president. But the other political spectrum will believe that uh, he is appreciating him for withdrawing the military troop. But that is contrary to the news that we are hearing where the Russian counterpart accusing the Americans of planning to remove the the president or let me say the military junta of Niger. However, during this G20 uh, summit, uh, the president of Nigeria, uh, after the G20 moved to Saudi Arabia to talk about the visa ban in um, uh, between Nigeria and uh, Dubai. But the question now is this, are there going to be any form of uh, the release or relief of that visa ban and the Emirate line flying back to Nigeria once again? This is still yet to be known as speculation have it that uh, there is already some decision making that there will be a removal of uh, the visa ban and Nigerians will be able to fly the Emirate airline once again. Now, this young lady that was uh, that passed on on board heading to UK and was, you know, left behind at Egypt without communicating with the embassy of Nigeria tells how bad our leadership and Nigeria is in the world as of today. Most people no longer take Nigeria serious because of the things that are happening in Nigeria and the reportage that is coming out of Nigeria, which is actually not good at all for the nation, the, the, the most populous black nations on earth. But then, when you have a lot of corruption people as your leaders and with the circumstances surrounding the current president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, one we say that many, many countries and uh, many presidents of, of, of many other nations of the world, we don't want to, you know, stain their integrity by, you know, trying to associate themselves with the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that could be the reason why you see a lot of negligence, or will I say, a lot of uh, uh, looking down upon Nigeria as a nation because her citizens and also the leadership are unserious with themselves. How? If Nigerian citizens are actually serious, it is not a call for protest, but it is a call to stand up and tell these people that enough is enough. Nigeria is as and if what to do democracy, which is the government of the people by the people for the people, then you have to listen to us. And with what happened on the 25th of February 2023, which was a kangaroo election and was upheld by a kangaroo judgment at the presidential petition tribunal sitting in Abuja in our court, it's something that Nigerians would have spoken up in order to stop this menace of monumental corruption. That is it for me today. Thank you for watching and soon 